In this video, I'll show you how you can easily create pixel art grass for foliage and for landscape textures in Unreal Engine 5. You'll learn how to create a static mesh from a texture we can use with the foliage tool, how to apply wind to just the upper part of the grass while keeping the root in place, how we generate and apply normal maps to give the landscape textures some depth and much more. If you don't know how to draw, don't worry because you can download my textures for free from the link in the description and follow along with this tutorial, but also feel free to use them in your own games. Once you've either drawn your own textures or downloaded mine and unzipped them, simply drag them into the content draw of your Unreal Engine project. I've also included a normal map here for the ground grass, which I'll talk about in more detail later. But for now, just select all of the diffuse textures, right click and apply paper to the texture settings to make sure the pixel art is crisp and not blurry. For the normal map, double click it, search for filter and set it to nearest. This way we make sure the pixel art is crisp, but we don't overwrite the normal map settings. Let's first start with setting up the grass for the foliage, since I think that's what most of you came here for. Right now we only have a texture, but to use this grass with the foliage tool and get all of the workflow and performance benefits from that, we have to turn it into a static mesh and basically create a simple custom sprite. Right click in the content drawer, create a new material and call it M underscore grass. Double click to open it up. And let's first set the blend mode to mask, so we can use this opacity mask pin here. And we also want to make sure that the two-sided is checked or the grass will be invisible from the backside. Now right click in the open area and look for texture sample, then select it and on the bottom left we can now search for our grass texture T underscore grass. Connect to the RGB pin on the base color and the alpha to the opacity mask. On the top left preview, it's a bit hard to see what the result is, so click on the third icon here to preview the material on a plane. This is exactly what we're looking for. Save the material. Back in the content draw, right click the grass material and create a material instance of it called mi underscore grass to make it easier to edit later on. Now there's still one more step left to turn this material instance into a static mesh to use with the foliage tool. Until recently, we'd have to go into Blender to create a small plane, but nowadays Unreal has built-in modeling tools we can use. On the top left, click on Selection Mode and then click on Modeling Mode. Click on Create and then Rectangle. We can just leave most of the settings here as default, but want to scroll down to the material and right away select our MI underscore grass. Now hovering over the ground of our map, you can already see a preview of the grass rectangle and just click anywhere to create it. Set it to 90 degrees on the red x-axis to point upward and maybe drag it up a little bit on the z-axis so we can see it better. Then click on accept. To apply this 90 degree rotation we just set up, we need to click on X-Form and then bake transform. Keep these settings as default and just click on accept. Next up, click on edit pivot. Right now the pivot point is at the top of the grass, but we need it to be at the root to work properly with the foliage tool. For the box position, just click on bottom and the pivot should have moved to the bottom center position. Click on accept. Now we can go back to selection mode and open up the content drawer. It should have created a folder called underscore generated somewhere with the static mesh, so you can now just drag it into whatever folder you want it to be in. I'll also rename it to sm underscore grass by hitting F2 while it's selected. Now we can just drag a couple of instances of this into the world, but of course we want to use the foliage tool to easily create multiple instances. Since we can't place foliage on this default ground, let's first create a small landscape. Go into landscape mode, and here on the left side we can adjust a couple of settings. For this test I don't need a big landscape and we'll just set the section size to 15 by 15 quads and click on create. After it's done, switch to foliage mode, open up the content drawer and drag our static mesh in here. While in paint mode, we can just left click and move the mouse around on the landscape to create some grass. But now I want to make the grass move with the wind a little bit. Go back to selection mode and open up the M underscore grass material we created before. Right click and look for simple grass wind. Connect the result to world position offset. We now need to provide values for these four inputs. Three of them are scalars and one is a vector three. Just hold the one key on the keyboard and left click three times to create three scalars. Then hold the three key and click one time to create a vector three. Connect all of these. Even after we click apply, since all of the values are zero, we can't see anything move in the preview. 
a value of 1.2 for the intensity, 0.2 for the weight, and 0.6 for the speed are good values I found through trial and error. Then click on apply and wait a little bit, and when we then check out the grass in the world, we can see it moving. While this already looks pretty good, we want the grass to move stronger at the tip and not at all at the root to give it a more grounded look. We can do this by using vertex paint to give all parts of the mesh a value between 0 and 1 through assigning colors and then multiplying the wind influence by that. Drag one instance of the grass static mesh into the world and drag it up a little bit. While it's selected, go into mesh paint mode, make sure vertex color is active and go into paint mode. Set vertex color view mode to the red channel and for color painting untick everything except for red, since we just need one channel. Here we have the paint color which is currently white and the erase color which is black. White represents a value of 1, which in this case means being fully affected by wind, while black is a value of 0 and means not affected by wind at all. Since everything is already white, which in this case is being displayed as red, we want to paint black over it. Click on the double arrow icon to change the active paint color. Now usually you could just hold and drag to apply vertex paint to a mesh, but since this is just a quad with four vertices, the only way to get this to work is to click a couple of times while you're right at the edge. So just move the mouse to the bottom edges and click a couple of times. You might have to change the brush strength or size and play around with the values a little bit to get the desired result. But this is looking pretty good now, so we can go back to selection mode and open up the grass material again. Right click and get the vertex color. Then drag off from the scaler we've been using for the wind intensity. Look for multiply and then plug in the red channel of the vertex color. Apply and wait. Even though nothing changes here in the preview, when going back to the map you can see that the root of the grass is now still while the upper part is moving. Well, at least for the one instance of the mesh we painted on, but it didn't apply that to the foliage instances in our world. Select our mesh again, go back to mesh paint mode and click on to mesh. When it asks you if you want to override the source asset, click on override. And now you can see that all of our foliage instances in the world are also affected by this. Let's now quickly take care of the ground texture. We already have a landscape set up and only need to create a material for it. Create a new material and call it m underscore landscape. Right click and look for texture sample. For the texture, select our T underscore ground grass and connect RGB to the base color. Copy paste it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V and then select the T ground grass underscore N for our normal map and connect RGB to normal. Make sure to apply and save. Then in the outliner, select landscape and set the material to M underscore landscape, which should make it show up in your scene. When zooming in, we can see that the normal map helps us make the floor look a bit bumpy by applying shadows and highlights. But it's not quite bumpy enough for my taste and things are also a bit too shiny. First, we can set the specular lower to something around 0.2, then drag off from our texture sample and add the flattened normal node. And don't forget to connect the result. Hold the 1 key and left click to create a scalar and just set it to minus 1. When we put a positive value here, we lessen the impact of our normal map, but in our case, we want to make it a bit stronger, so we can set it to a negative value instead. I think you can easily tell that the shadows and highlights are now more pronounced and this is even clearer when you have some mountains in your map and look at the landscape from different angles. By the way, to create the normal map, I used a free software called Lighter that is available on HIO. I just set the height to 100, soft to 2 to not make it too harsh and pixelated, turned off the bump part completely and inverted the Y channel. And that's all we have to do to create pixel grass for foliage and the landscape. You could of course take things to the next level by creating a blend material for the landscape with multiple textures and by making multiple variants of the grass, and that's actually something I'll cover in my full JRPG course that I'm currently working on. You can join the waitlist from the link in the description and also get instant access to my paper 2D top-down template. But I think what you've learned today is enough to get you started. Thanks for watching till the end and also thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members. 